And I want to talk about faith. Faith, you will keep on hearing about faith. Faith, faith, faith. Because there is nothing you can do without faith. Tell your neighbor nothing. You cannot please God. You cannot live a good Christian walk. Even living with your family. There must be an element of faith. Some of you woke up. The alarm woke you up. You had faith in the alarm. Suppose it didn't wake you up. You must have faith into something. There must be some faith within us that helps us to connect with what God wants us to do. Hebrews 11 verse 1 to 6 is the text that we are going to look to. And then we will try to see a little bit about what faith is in a little way. I don't want to preach to you. I want just to talk to you. Uh, so a lot of concentration is on my notes so that you can hear what we are talking about when we talk about faith. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see, this is what the Asians were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than kind deed. By faith he was commended, as righteous. When God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith Abel speak, still speaks even though he is dead. By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Verse number six, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I'm talking to people that have heard about this text many, many times, but let's see whether we can get something or we can add on to the knowledge that we have. We wake up, even sitting on where you have sat, actually it has taken faith. Can I tell you for sure, the chair you are sitting on does not weigh the same weight that you have. But you sat on it. You did not lift it up fast, weigh it a little bit, but you just came and just sat. Uh, because you have faith. And, and so on. And there are so many things that are going to happen now, here, because of faith. When I was coming, I, I turned the corner and I saw three vehicles running very fast, so I stopped. I normally like observing so that I can also ask myself, ikifunga nitapigia kona wapi? Faith. By faith. Coming all the way to church. By faith. And every car stopping, I have to observe what is happening because when it is dark, you don't know which side your enemy is coming from. But we are so glad that we can have faith in God. We can depend on God because our safety, our protection is all in God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It was so f funny when we, when, when we left uh, Muranga, I came to Nairobi myself, but the other team left through Nyahururu all the way to, 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 to Nakuru through Subukia. And uh, when they got to Mailine in uh, Nyahururu, we had two uh, Noahs, two Noahs, carrying books and carrying uh, the secretariat materials, and they were driven by the secretariat team. And uh, there were two, three V8s, before them, three, V8. If you understand what a V8 is, even what I have is not a V8. So we are talking about a huge thing in terms of power. Then all of a sudden, the Noahs, they pass those V8. Unfortunately, one of the Noahs, when they tried to break, 
So it hit one of the V8. But it was ours. So the joke was when we met in Nakuru, uh, now we are going to sell our V8 and we buy Noah because Noah's are going very fast. But I can tell you what sometimes happens. If, if, and I say if, if you're overtaken by a Mercedes, 350SE or whatever, SL, whatever, whatever class it is, and you are driving a Pro Box, you, you don't worry a lot. But when a Pro Box passes that class of a car, there is a tendency of feeling, watcha tu ni muonyeshe tu, hii kitu imeundwa na mnagani. And you know, every one of us on the road, whether it is an S-Class, whether it is a Pro Box, all on the road, what we are saying is that we have faith that we'll get to our destination. It is not at Atushindani, but somebody shared here, the, the Bishop of, uh, of Sitam, when he came to speak to us one time. He said, and, and, and I don't know why all of us had Volkswagen. Volkswagens were very many. A lot of preachers had Volkswagen. They were also cheap to maintain because they had no, you did not need oil. All you needed is Maji. And so he was giving a testimony. He comes from Nyanza. They give a testimony that he left Nairobi and there was this vehicle that they keep on passing one another and Naipita, Naya Nampita. Sasa mbaka wakifika Naivasha ni kama washa juana. Wakifika Nakuru ni kama mabeste. Lakini mungu alimuuliza swali. Muna shindana na huyo jamaa. Unajua kulia naenda? Kwa gafla wakielekea kaona jamaa mepotea. Kwa sabu kweri kabisa huyo jamaa tunashindana nae. Njia nae wenda. Sio ile ni nae wenda. Bwana Yesu wasifiwe. Na kwa hivyo ni vizuri kujua, we all exercise some type of faith every day of our lives. Every day of our lives, we exercise some types of faith. But the question that we need to ask ourselves is, is our faith placed in the right places or is it placed on the right people? Number two, where should our faith be placed? So we can place it on the wrong people or wrong places or we can place it on the right places and the right people because faith is important to be placed on the right people. So we are talking about a matter of faith. So what is faith? What is faith? If somebody came and asked you what faith is, I know you would quote that scripture again and again and again and try to explain it, but let's see in a in a, a, a nutshell, in a little, in a layman's language, what faith is all about. Faith makes the things hoped for as real as if we already have them. Now that is what faith is. In other words, I'm believing God for a car. It, faith makes that car real as if I already have it. I hope you're getting that point. So if I'm going to walk in my restoration then, as I pray, I will have faith in my restoration as if it has already taken place. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So faith makes things hoped for as real as if we already have them. Number two, faith provides evidence that what is unseen is absolutely real. So faith gives me some evidence. And some of this evidence is that God has done it to somebody else. And if God has done it to somebody else, then there is evidence enough that he will still do it for me. Because it is, there is no secret of what God can do. So faith provides evidence that what is unseen is absolutely real. That is going to happen. When we were praying for locusts, and I thank you, Millicent, for thanking God that the locusts, you're not hearing much about it. But you know the point, as we prayed, the locusts invaded. We are landing in Meru, locusts have also landed there. You see, and we kept on saying, 
even the physical locusts, God will have to turn them around. God will make sure they don't destroy us because we are believing God for provision. So faith helps us to keep on praying and refusing even when he has mefika embu. We are still saying, no, has it avuka mpaka? And you know, somebody from Bere told me this. When they arrived in, 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 in Bere, they made a mistake to go to Mugoka. Mugoka is one of those wonderful plants there. Then I don't know what happened. They went to the dams. Now, <laughs> you might say, did you pray for them to go to the dams? No, we didn't. All what we ask the Lord is God. Make sure they don't destroy our produce. So they, they didn't. Now that is the God we are talking about. So my faith will give me evidence that what is unseen is absolutely real. Number three, faith is the confidence in the worthiness and ability of someone or something. So if I have faith in God, it's simply in, I, I know he's worthy. I know that he is able. I know the power that he has. When we were finishing uh, uh, Kesha here, pastors read to us Psalms 46. And verse 7 and 11 talks about the God of Jacob. The God of Jacob. He is our refuge. The God of Jacob. And I thought about, about when we left. Why Jacob? It's because Jacob, all what he got was a blessing. He had faith in God and his father blessed him. What a power of blessing. That God of Jacob, once he blesses us, we can have that confidence that the God that we trust in, what he has said about you, will come to pass. Number four, faith is setting your heart on the object of your hope and your confidence. So, I'm going to set everything that is within me on the faith that I have in God. Everything that is within me. I'm going to have it. My object of my hope and my confidence, I will set it into my heart so that everything around me, if you cut any part of me, will speak about the faith that I have in God. Now that we talk about the object of faith, the object of faith. You see, there are some inadequate objects of faith. Inadequate. For example, science and technology. You know, yesterday Google lied to me. Google. Google ni muongo. Na ukimuliza, are you a human being? Atakwambia, no, I'm just intelligent. But he lied to me. From my house, there was somebody who was at a party 15 minutes from my house. So they told me, get to Kegwa, get to Northern Bypass, and then kept quiet. Then I drove, it was 15 minutes. So where 15 minutes ended, I, he, st he started speaking again. He says, now, uh, turn around, you're going two, two hours and 15 minutes to your destination. I stopped. I called the person I was going to. How? 15 minutes now is 2 hours and he told me, you passed it. So Google lied to me. And Google can lie to you too. So I will not have faith in Google. Because Google can lie to some of Some of the time Google has told me to go on the left. When actually where I'm going is on the right. There is no road on the left. I have to say, ah, potale abali we Google. Taingiria pa. And then when you enter, nikama alijua utaingiria pa. And I now continue six kilometers. <laughs> science and technology. Putting our faith on science and technology is, is a wrong object. Putting our faith on money, false God, security, wealth, and other people. Actually, those are objects that are not right. That kind of an object it's not right. Even putting faith on ourselves. The heart of man, most deceitful, above everything else. So those are wrong objects. But there are some objects of faith. There is only one object of faith, and that is God. God. 
proper faith in God. This is what the Bible tells us in verse number 6. Proper faith in God believes, first of all, that he exists. And number two, believes that he rewards those that who endlessly seek him. So in other words, I know God is there and he's going to reward my effort. I know God is there and he's going to supply my needs according to his riches in glory. I know God is there. I know God is there and I have faith that what he has promised he's going to do. That's a little bit about what faith is. So proper faith in God is believing that God is. God is. Sometimes the things around us, they, they don't tell us God is. We see like God is not. But proper faith in God, you simply confess to yourself, not what I'm seeing, but it is what God is allowing you to believe him for. Because they are good things. They are good things. Some examples from the, the, the verses that we read, from verse number 2 to verse number 5, there's an example that we look to. I know there will be many other examples and you can do it on your own. Examples of faith. Abel. Abel. If you read Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter number 4. If you read Genesis chapter number 4, it's where you find the story of Abel and the faith that he had in his God. Adam made love to his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portion from some of his firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. These two men give offerings like we can come together and give an offering. Both of us can come to this house and give an offering. And, but God rejected Cain's offering but accepted Abel's. So Cain's offering was rejected. Abel was received. Why? Hebrews 14 verse 4 says Abel gave his offering to God by faith. In other words, if we give without faith, our offering to God, if we give without faith, our service to God, if we give without faith, our ministry to God, if we give without faith, it will not be accepted. That is simply what I'm saying. Because it is the matter of the heart. Kind of offered some Carelessly, and it showed his heart. Abel offered the first in faith, showing his heart. Cain made, made sure everything else was taken care of, so he kept the first of the crops, then gave God what was left. So kind faith is in Cain, not in God. But Abel... His faith is in God. Abel had hope and confidence in God that he would take care of him with the little that has been left. So when I have faith in God, everything that I do, I do it in faith. While in Morang, I reminded the Kikuyus uh, that now that we are getting back to our culture, that we used to sing a song long time ago which used to go something like this. Our head weddings are not a matter of mutugo. Our maruga, our festiv festivities, are not mutugo, are not just. But it is God. We do it because of God. Everything that we do, we do it because of God. Now, what do we learn from Abel about faith? That faith is a matter of the heart. Faith is a matter of the heart. Cain knew God existed, talked about God that existed, knew from his parents that God existed, that he had even kicked them out of the garden. He knew all this. Cain knew all this. But Cain did not trust God. You see, somebody said in Kenya today, everybody is born again. 
I've never had a politician who is not born again. They all say, Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. They like that, you know. But you see, true, Bwana asifiwe, because everything that has breath should praise God, which is true. But they behave like they are born again. It is the language that they know. I hope you are following what I'm trying to, to bring to you. Faith is a matter of the heart. Cain did not trust God. He knew God was there, but he didn't have any hope. He didn't have any confidence. He didn't have any faith in God. He made an attempt at faith, but his heart wasn't in it. He gave an offering because others used to do it. But Abel knew that God existed. Abel knew that God rewards. And his action showed it. He gave the best. He was willing to place his faith to place his future in the hands of God. That we can place our future, we can place our lives in the hand of God because in the hand of God, they are, it's safe there. It's safe there in the hands of God even when things are not going right. Secondly, your faith is a matter of your heart. You may believe that God exists, but it, he may not be the first in your life. So where is your hope? Where is your confidence? Where faith is? Where is your faith right now? Who is your hope? Where is your hope? Who or what are you trusting today? How about your future? Is it in yourself? Is it in your abilities? Is, is, it, is, is your life a testimony of faith in God? Who has your, who has your heart today? Because that's what faith is all about. What can we learn from Abel? Faith is a matter of heart. Your faith is a matter of heart. So that is Abel. The next person we can learn about is Enoch. We find Enoch in just a few verses of Genesis. He is found in the human, human family tree. He falls between his father Gerard and his son Methuselah. But he is unique for two particular reasons. He is described as a man, unlike any other in this passage, that walked with God. And he is only one of the two men who ever did not die. Hebrew gives us a little more insight into Enoch's life. Enoch went straight to heaven because he pleased God. This happened by faith. Enoch walked with God by faith. And the Bible says he pleased God because of his faith. In other words, we can walk in God. Yesterday I had a place and somebody made a comment like this. He said, very few lawyers will go to heaven and try to explain why they will not. They, 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 and, and so on. So the, but there were two lawyers who were in that meeting and it was passed that those two will go to heaven. When I thought about it, I thought about what surprises we are going to have when we get to heaven. Three surprises. One of the surprises is finding your neighbor in heaven and you thought they were going to hell. It will surprise you. It will shake you. The second surprise that you will find out is you if you find yourself in heaven. Because you know yourself. You'll also be surprised. Hatabimi. But the other surprise you'll find is that heaven is real. It will surprise you. Because some of us walk like heaven is not real. I was telling someone, heaven is so real, the only thing that we don't, we don't drive cars there. But it's so real that anyone who has decided to live in a mansion, everybody will be in one. It's only one singer who sang a song and we have canceled it because how can you pray to the Lord to put you and put your cabin in a corner somewhere? No, I need a mansion. Yeah? Because the mansion are the ones that we have promised. Not cabins at the corner. Cabins at the corner. He pleased God with his faith. So, so what are we learning from Enoch? We are learning this. Faith affects our walk. Now if you have faith in God, does it affect your walk? 
Or are you born again in church and then when you leave, you're not? Are you born again in church with other Christians when you get into your house, you're not? Do you honor others out there, but when in your own house, you don't honor those people that are there? Faith, Enoch, faith helped Enoch walk with God. He lived every day of his life with a total, absolute confidence in God. Where we place our faith in affects our walk. When we have faith in ourselves, it affects the way we live. We live for ourselves selfish and uncaring for others. We are the object of our affection and we do anything to, to protect our affection. We are our only hope, so we have got to do whatever it takes. People who only have faith in themselves, they will do anything to remain where they are. They don't care whether people die or live because they are living for themselves. When we trust in God, God who disciplines us, God who judges us, when we live in a way that keeps us from that discipline and judgment, then even our life will portray the same. We are able to live in this world where there are those evils if our lives are affected by the faith we have in God. You look at a person who has faith in God, then you know this person has faith in God. You know, I think it was also yesterday I was talking to someone and I said, my, my father loved God. But my father loving God, wealth did not mean a lot. So we used to sing a song that was always in our, in our prayer meetings. Man of Sorrows. But we sang it in Kikuyu. And you know, we, we, we did not bother a lot on wealth. So I was telling this person, but you know what I discovered? Prosperity is in the Bible. So when we seek it, we are not against God. But then the question is, do we go for it like we are not believers in God? Or do we go for it like we know, if I have it, praise God. If I don't, praise God. It is not the one I aim at. I will not be here just to, you know, and, and, and maybe some of you that are in the leadership here, you know. I have never, and I mean this, never struggled even to know how much money has been offered on a Sunday morning. I have never. Because when I came here, I knew that God who has sent me here, he is able. He is actually able. I used to earn more money than the money I got when I came here. The money that we would not even count because it was not countable, Josiah. Shirigi dhate, unaweka kwa mfuko tu. Kama utareta ni sawa dunia yu igine. So the treasurer had very few problems. Because a whole month, 800 yata kufika ni ngumu. But I still served the Lord. And I told one of the elders, I am not here because of what I can get. I know where I can get it. Ningenunua matatu nyingine kule niendere biashara. But I chose to come and serve the people of God. So when today God has blessed me, some people are also asking, Hey, na hiyo kazi ni poa? My goodness, hiyo kazi ni poa. Ni poa hiyo kazi. But if you go for the wrong reasons, you will struggle. You will struggle. Actually, you'll have a lot of problems. But if you go for the right thing, if you go because God has called you, then you will serve the people of God because you love God. It is not out of what you're going to get out of it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So faith pleases God. Your faith has to please God. Your faith has to please God. God saw how Enoch lived. He saw how he walked in a sin-filled world. He saw that Enoch lived by faith in him. God knew Enoch's heart was tuned towards him. God knew Enoch was trusting in him every step of the way. And that pleased God. Our dependence and confidence in God pleases him. He loves to see us living by faith and not by sight. He loves to see that our hearts are totally committed to him and his ways. He loves to see us react to life with confidence and hope in him. Hope in God. So biblical faith or true biblical faith 
is confidence in the worthiness and ability of God. It is setting your heart on God. It is knowing that what has not yet happened is good. Uh, it is good as done in God. In other words, I know that even what has not yet appeared, it is good as done because of our faith in God. Hallelujah. Yes, is your heart set on God? Is your faith affecting how you live? Is your faith pleasing God? Because we are saved through faith. Sometimes our faith is tested. Things happen in life that test our faith. Our confidence in the worthiness and ability of God is tested. Setting our hearts solely on God is tested. Believing that what has not yet happened is as good as done is tested. You get tested all around yourself. You get tested. What do we do to know when we face the testing of our faith? What do we need to know? We need to know that the testing of our faith is going to happen. We have to expect the testing of our faith. And, and this is one of the tests of our faith happening to us, even happening to me. Whoa! Hallelujah. Testing of our faith is going to happen. There is no way around it. Because we are going to get sick, we'll be tested. We are going to have accidents that will happen. And we will wonder, why God? It will be tested. We are going to face tragedies. They are going to happen to us. We are going to have hard times. It is going to test our life. We are going to face hard times. Satan is going to fight against us. The world is going to fight against us. Your faith is going to be tested. That will come. If you're not in it now, you're going to get into it. If you're not coming out of it now, you're just about to enter into it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we need to know that our values will determine our reactions to the testing of our faith. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Sometimes you want to finish and you don't know how to finish. But we can finish there by saying, yes, we'll be tested. Everything that we have will be tested. But why are we having this testing? It's because the purpose of testing is of our faith. So that we can build our confidence in the worthiness and ability of God. Number two, so that it can assure our hearts that God is sufficient. Number three, to fortify our hope that what God has promised, he's going to do. Faith, that's what faith is all about. That your faith will be tested. That faith that is going to be tested and tried. But how do you do when those things happen to you? What do you do when those things happen to you? Faith makes the things hoped for as real as if they, you have already have them. Oh, may God give us faith. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, neighbor, all oh, what you need is faith. To have faith in God. And it doesn't matter where you are. If you only have faith in God. Faith helps you to see. You don't have it, but our faith that is going to come in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary. Hallelujah. Father, help us so that our faith will stretch itself up to you in the name of Jesus.